What's up guys, Douglas Strew here, and welcome back to my Path of Exile series. This video itself won't contain any gameplay, but it does tie in with my other Let's Play videos that I've uploaded here. So, I know that it's been a while since my last video, and I just want to sort of go over the crazy changes that this build has experienced over the last year. If you aren't interested and just sort of want to see me progress through the game, uh, I would say just skip this video, but I will be providing a lot of helpful tips on how I made this build so much better than it was before. So, it might be worth sticking around if you eventually want to work on making your own character in the game. First off, this build was originally written in 3.0, and I think that's around the time of 3.0 or 3.1 is when I actually started the Let's Play for uh, our Slayer here. And the build itself really hasn't received any updates from the original uh, writer since, and I don't remember if I had initially linked the build guide or not, so uh, this is sort of an update on that. We're currently in patch 3.7, and we just got a huge rework of the entire Path of Exile melee system. Uh, Cyclone, which is the skill that we're going to be sort of focusing on, received a whole array of quality of life and other buffs to its damage, area of effect, and things like that. And the Slayer Ascendancy got a ton of damage buffs too. Uh, we actually have like uh, increased weapon and unarmed attack range, which is going to be a ton of AoE for our Cyclone, and uh, we actually get more melee damage to enemies based on proximity and we're going to be a lot of be doing a lot of close combat so uh, this is definitely a better note to choose than some of the other leech ones but i'll explain the changes as we go essentially after we re reworking the path of building plan i was able to double and maybe even triple the damage output that we were initially seeing yeah we're creeping up on a million and i think with even better gear than what we're seeing here we can exceed a million dps buffed so that is a lot for cyclone because cyclone hits so fast so hard and uh, clears so quick i've seen people conquer the end game on much less dps than that this gear that i'm working with is super good but we'll, we'll go over that the biggest changes i made to this character was the fact that i specced out of bleed i know that before we had picked up the crimson dance uh, keystone to inflict a ton of debuffs on our enemy and I think there was also some bloodletting uh, or some other blood nodes in the tree here. But anyway, we spec'd out of that completely because getting bleed damage to scale nicely just requires way too much investment uh, than what we really wanted to put into the character. We would have needed a ton of extra bleed mods on our gear that we would have had to sacrifice physical damage, attack speed, and things like that. And uh, we also would have needed to grab a bunch of these bleed nodes on the tree. All this bleeding here would have probably would have cost us at least like 10 points that we instead can put into other things like life, damage with our swords, more strength, more jewel slots, or we can actually customize our uh, build a little bit more. There's some optimization I could definitely do to the tree here, so this is not going to be final, but I just wanted to show, sort of show, you know, this is at level 91, what our damage output can look like with, uh, with moderately decent gear. Since we also spec'd out of the damage over time, I've replaced the Death's Oath chest that we initially had with a just rare uh, body armor. You can ignore the Cyclone deals 59% more damage. That's just because this close combat skill gem hasn't been implemented into Path of Building yet. As you can see, my DPS hasn't changed by toggling that gem on and off. So what it does is supported skills deal up to 59% more melee damage to enemies based on proximity. I just threw that on to my chest here, so that way um, the path of building numbers would reflect. But yeah, anyway, we replaced our chest here with just another rare chest with better life modifiers on it. If we look at our rare chest here, we actually can get a mod that will say socketed gems are supported by level one meme. And what this is going to do is support our cyclone skill with the equivalent gem. So it's essentially turning our six link armor into a seven link armor. So we have our cyclone, our five supports for cyclone, and then we have the level one meme, which is included on the chest. That's not a benefit that we were going to get with death's oath. And because of the way meme works, we're still dealing 15% more physical damage. More is an insane multiplier that we want to have. And that's 15% more damage that's going to go on our cyclone, which is huge. We really, really want that. That's going to be so much better than anything death's oath can provide. One thing I do want to point out though is that the level one main mod is very very difficult to get um it is super rare and on top of getting that and really good life mods that we have here probably close to impossible and uh if the funds are there we'll probably just end up buying one from another player rather than crafting it ourselves but we'll go over this a little bit more when the time calls for it because we're not going to be getting this until way way end game just because of its price and uh level requirements 
I also know that last year I had chosen to help Oak in Act 2. He was one of the bandits that gave us uh, some life regen, some more physical damage, and uh, some physical damage reduction, which is good for armor-based builds. Honestly, the two passive points is going to be a lot more beneficial to us um, because we can customize our build. We can grab, you know, those two extra points can go into this jewel slot here, which we can get much better modifiers than what Oak was going to give us. So the two more passive points are pretty much always going to be something you'll want to choose unless you want the critical strike multiplier from Alira. There is something that we can do. There's a vendor recipe to sort of reverse this choice. We'll do that another time. It's not super, super important. Oak's modifiers that we just got are pretty good for us during leveling but we won't want to keep that. We'll want to switch that out for the passive points. Speaking of the skill tree here, I want to point out that we didn't really take many attack speed nodes that will net us a higher damage output. Path of Building actually has this feature called Show Node Power, which if we have Cyclone uh, selected here, we can click that and we can see all the nodes that are really going to benefit our build a little bit more. The deeper the red, the more DPS we're going to get. If we go ahead and grab Berserking, which is more attack speed, you'll see our DPS go up. But we aren't going to choose that. Uh, Cyclone skills more off of the big hits that you're doing the initial physical damage which is what we're scaling a lot of and then it also scales off of the aoe because we want to be able to clear things a lot quicker attack speed is not a requirement with cyclone it is with a lot of other melee skills but we want to sort of we don't really want to ignore it but it's not as crucial as these other modifiers that we're picking up they actually changed the way cyclone works now because if we look at it it is now a channeling skill and it uh sort of builds up aoe the longer it's being channeled for we're not going to be limited to this little itty bitty circle around us like we were in our last video and it just feels like such a better skill so in conclusion attack speed is not really needed one more small change that isn't really affecting us yet is that this build wanted to use the Witchfire Brew Flask to inflict the Vulnerability Curse without requiring us to cast it or link it with anything. Well, the Witchfire Brew actually changed and does not grant a Vulnerability Curse anymore. It now uh, inflicts a Despair Curse, which doesn't affect our build at all. So this is actually pointless to have. So in order to still use this curse, we will be linking it with the cast when damage taken gem, which I have it here. We'll, so that way, when we get hit with uh, 1,635 damage, we will emit our vulnerability debuff. Any enemy inflicted with this curse will take more physical damage, which is our root damage source. So this is going to be a good method to just sort of set it and forget it, and will prevent us from needing a ton of cast speed and a free hotbar slot to manually cast it. This is just going to be a little bit more efficient and one less thing we have to worry about while we're uh, while we're clearing maps and killing bosses. I changed some support gems around with Cyclone and added that close combat skill gem that I pointed out before, which is why I included that mod on the glorious plate here. Like I said, you're not going to see that Cyclone deals 59% more damage mod. That doesn't exist in the game. Just ignore that. I just included that there so that way the path of building numbers would reflect the change because as we see, we check we can toggle it on and off and our DPS numbers don't change. Pulverize here will give us uh, more AoE and uh, more melee area damage with the sacrifice of less attack speed. As I pointed out before, attack speed isn't necessary with Cyclone, so this skill gem is absolutely perfect for the build. Also, Fortify here has a good damage multiplier on it now, as you can see in the gem description here. It didn't have that before. I think it had some increased damage, but now we're seeing supported skills deal more melee damage. More is always better than increased in this game. I don't remember if I've ever said that before. You always want to go for more. You don't want to go for increased. More is a multiplier versus increased is additive. So you will be benefiting a lot more from the 34% more than 34% increased. For bosses, we actually added in the Vol Double Strike here. And I can show you what the skill does after, but if you pop this out in a boss fight, a bunch of clones will just show up and start smacking the absolute shit out of whatever you're attacking. Once they start hitting uh, while you're smacking the boss with your Cyclone, uh, the boss will just kind of melt. Honestly, you might even be able to swap a Bloodlust in with with your cyclone here you could probably swap out like fortify during boss fights and put in a bloodlust because vault double strike has a huge uh, bleed chance on it so if your clones are going in and hitting the boss chances are they're going to be making the boss bleed if we have bloodlust link with our cyclone and we're hitting that supported skills deal 59 percent more melee physical damage against bleeding enemies so if we go into the configuration we'll go ahead and toggle the uh, is the enemy bleeding and now we're over a million dps so more dps in boss fights is going to be cool 
cool. Vault Double Strike itself doesn't really need to be six linked, so this isn't super crucial. However, the more links you have, the more damage we're gonna be able to do. By itself, this Vault Double Strike um, is going to have, it's still pushing out 101,000 dam 101, damage, uh, which is pretty insane, because if you're doing that on top of your Cyclone, you're absolutely wrecking bosses. I guarantee that the Vault Double Strike is worth using, even if you're only on a four link or a five link, which is gonna be super easy to get once we get our Star Forge. Another thing for bossing is that we have our Vol Ancestral War Chief. I think in my previous videos I was using the Ancestral Protector Totem. The War Chief is a sort of upgraded uh, version of that, where if we cast it, um, we are actually going to get more melee damage while the totem is active, and then our totem itself is going to be attacking with a copy of our melee weapon, and we'll just sort of swat at the boss while giving us that buff. These are just great, easy supports that don't really require much investment, and is definitely worth keeping on the build somewhere. A couple more little things here is that we linked the Blood Rage uh, buff to our cast when damage taken. And what Blood Rage does is it will uh, give us more attack speed, it will give us more life leech, and it also gives us a chance to gain what's called the Frenzy Charge on kill. A Frenzy Charge, once we are at maximum Frenzy Charges, uh, it's just a little bit more damage that we'll get. We'll see our DPS numbers change here when we toggle it so we definitely get a lot more dps when we're at our maximum frenzy charges uh blood rage is going to ensure that we are going to be uh, getting those charges in the first place the blood rage buff will actually uh, give us a little bit of a life degen however we are going to be out regening that degen uh by 92 life so so the degen isn't really going to be noticeable especially when we're leeching 1500 life on every hit we also got a flame golem in here and what the flame golem is going to do is just act as a small decoy it gives us a little little bit of a buff, just 18% increased damage. Every little bit helps, but the main thing here is that we want our Flame Golem to act as a decoy, so bosses will attack that while we can hit it with our Vol Double Strike and our Cyclone. Once again, not crucial, but it is nice to have. One more thing I haven't talked about yet is that we are going to be using an aura called Pride. Pride does as it works similar to close combat, where enemies that are closer to us will take more damage, and um, they'll actually take more melee damage the longer they are in our aura for. And with the changes to Blood Magic, if we look down here in the tree, there is another keystone here called Mortal Conviction. And we actually will get to use our Pride Aura for free with no cost to our life pool. The downside is that we don't get to use any other auras, so we won't really be able to use our Heralds that we're currently using. So we'll sort of, <clears throat> we won't want to take Mortal Conviction until uh, much later in the game. Also, another thing is that I sold that primordial jewel that we found in our last video for a fuck ton. So, uh, unfortunately, I will have more currency than you might have at this point in the league. I guess that's kind of how Path of Exile works, though, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll just kind of tr I'll try to keep this build uh, a bit more budget for you, though, so that way the leveling process seems a little bit more realistic. So, hopefully, I'll get to upload a bit more with this character in the future, and hopefully, it won't change too much more with any upcoming patches. It may get nerfed again just due to how strong it is, but I'm hoping that it will be still sufficient to conquer the end game with. And like I said before, I'm not going to upload any gameplay yet because this video has been super lengthy and I just wanted to make some changes to our current character uh, before getting back to killing stuff. I will outline these changes in the upcoming video. Thanks for watching this video though guys and thanks for sticking around and if you have comments about the build that we're using or if you have questions about any of the changes, uh, please just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Take care.